Hi, I'm Joe and welcome to the channel. In this series of videos, we've been exploring different genres of music. And I'm really excited to share this one. This is alternative pop music. And what's great about this genre is it's still very guitar driven in a lot of its songs. We're gonna take a look at the different guitar parts that make up this genre and some of the different sounds as well. Let's go ahead and break this song down. So this song actually has 10 guitar parts to it. And I know that sounds like a lot, but in this genre of music, there's a lot of layering of guitar parts. Some are very subtle and just adds as texture in the background, and others are more predominant, maybe even adding a secondary hook to the song. Another characteristic move of this genre is to take a normal guitar sound and tweak it a little bit so it's not necessarily sounding like a normal guitar. And that's the case with the first guitar part. The first guitar part is gonna be using a modulated reverb on the sound. And by doing this, again, it's tweaking the sound so it's not so obvious that it's a guitar that's happening. Let me play a little bit of that first guitar part. It goes like this. As you can hear, there's a lot going on with that sound in terms of an effect. And again, the reverb is modulated, so there's pitches that are bending and shifting all behind it, and it's adding secondary harmonies and tones to the overall sound. All that I'm doing is playing in the A major pentatonic box. And if I turn that effect off, all that you would hear is these notes. And again, A major pentatonic starting on the E, But with the effect, it adds a little something extra to the sound. So taking a very basic guitar part, putting a special effect on it, adds a little bit something extra and special to the song. Now, because there's so much effect on the first guitar part, the second guitar part is there to do a little bit of a counter melody to that line, but also to add clarity to it. And so that effect is now off, and we're just using a standard guitar sound. But instead of playing the exact same line, I'm doing a little bit again of a counter melody, and I'm stuttering the first notes. But again, still staying in the A major pentatonic box. And all I'm doing again is I'm starting on the E, just like I did in the first guitar part, but then I deviate a little bit off of that, just again, to add a different melody to it. And you'll also notice I'm palm muting that part where I'm taking the fleshy part of my hand and I'm resting a little bit before the bridge on the strings 
and I'm dampening the sound. Guitar part number three just adds a little bit of a funky element to the song. And it's just one note, it's A, played on the seventh fret of the D string. And it's just, again, a little bit of a funky pattern. It goes like this. And you can see, again, I'm incorporating that palm mute where I'm muting the string and playing the note. So it's a very simple part, but this is one of those texture lines that I was talking about earlier. So as you can see, the first three guitar parts just add a little bit of ear candy to the song itself. We haven't really gotten to any parts that actually are laying down the harmonic structure or the chord progression in the song. Well, that's going to change now when we look at guitar part four. Guitar part four is going to lay down the chords for the song, especially in the chorus section. Basically, we're going to have E to F sharp minor to D and then a quick A but over C sharp. So an inversion. An inversion is when you're not playing necessarily the root in the bass, but you're actually playing a different note in the chord, which in this case here, we're playing the third, which is C sharp. And this rhythm pattern goes like this. just repeats throughout that part of the song, mainly the chorus. Guitar part five is adding texture to the background. It is basically the same chords, but down lower an octave here, playing the E here as a power chord, to the F sharp as a power chord, to the D, sliding down to the C sharp, to D, to C sharp again, to the E, and that move where you're listening to the D going to the C sharp, going to the D, that's copying what the bass is playing. So again, this part is very low in the mix just to add texture. It goes like this. And then it just repeats. Guitar part number six is adding even more texture to that chord progression. Now we already have some guitars playing in this range and in the lower range, but now we're going to play up even higher. And how I'm getting this shape is I'm basically just playing the E, but just the top half. So this triad right here, E, G sharp, and B. And if I were to do the F sharp minor, it would look like this, where we have the F sharp, a and C sharp. And if I was going to do the D chord, down here it would be D, F sharp, and A. But instead of using these three notes of the triad, I'm basically just going to play the top two. So again, this is outlining the E, F sharp, D, but up here. So a very easy and subtle part, but all three of those parts together build up and make the song sound bigger and the guitar parts sound bigger because they all complement each other and they're all from different spectrums of the frequency range. And so this is where you can see the power of layering your guitar parts. So moving on to part number seven, we're finally entering the verse of the song, if you will. And those chords are very different. It's basically just gonna play a D, to the F sharp minor, back to the D, to the F sharp minor, to the D again, the F sharp minor, and then the A and the F sharp minor. So the first part in this verse section, which is guitar part seven, just plays the roots. And 
that's all that part is doing. Again, adding a little bit of texture. But one trick, if you notice, I'm playing all of those notes on the same string. I could have played it like this. But if you listen carefully, the notes on the other strings sound thinner. It doesn't have that continuity that you get when you play the same string with different pitches. This string, the A string, is thicker, and so it adds a little bit more body to the notes. Instead of this. You can hear that this A on the G string is thinner than this A on the A string on the 12th fret. So, I encourage you to kind of experiment with this a little bit. When you're coming up with your own guitar parts, see if you can add some continuity to the sound and the texture by staying on one string. The eighth guitar part is adding a little bit of a callback to the main ear candy hook that we saw in guitar part one. This time though, no effect on there. And it's a slight change to the melody, but it's just familiar enough to the listener that they go, I think I heard that before. So this guitar part goes like this. Again, with the palm mute. And just basically playing in this A major pentatonic box. Now we get to the last two guitar parts, nine and 10, and they're basically identical. They're just played in different parts of the neck. And what we're doing is we're playing off of the D major shape and the A major shape. And as you saw on the other part where we were playing the D up here from this triad, just the top two strings, we're gonna play this as like a pulsating rhythm and add our pinky down to pick up the B. Now there we switch to pick up the A chord right here. Just the top two strings. And do the same move where you're gonna knock down the B with your pinky or your third finger. And then back to the D. And take that same exact shape, but move it down one octave, which would be here on your D and your G string. So the third fret, I'm playing the F sharp on the D string, and I'm playing A on the second fret of the, D, of the G string. And I'm playing that same exact move. So those two guitar parts together, when you stack them on top of each other, actually create one bigger guitar part and sound. So what are some takeaways from this genre of music? Again, think about layering your guitar parts and see if you can break down guitar parts into their simplest elements and then stack them, maybe an octave difference or just add different textures with different guitar sounds. And that's the other thing too. Remember, maybe try to experiment and take a really wacky sound or an effect and put it on one of the guitar parts kind of to, to distort it a little bit from the listener and hiding that it actually is a guitar. That's another video down for this series. If you found any value in it whatsoever, maybe please consider subscribing down below, hit the like button, and knock on the bell and you'll be notified when the next video comes out in this series. Until next time, I wish you a wonderful day.